the climate change will go progressively worse because the carbon dioxide is rising all the time. But of course, if we leave the carbon dioxide in for the next 25 years, we're going to have a big problem getting it out of the air. So that's why we need to start now um, taking up the carbon dioxide while it's still a manageable problem. But Ian Jones's idea of making the oceans bloom by boosting them with nitrogen may have a very serious downside. Fish have died where there is an excess of phytoplankton, but Ian Jones thinks he can control the phytoplankton at levels that won't kill marine life. So his plan will only work where there is not much phytoplankton to begin with. But the important about ocean nourishment is we're not doing it where there's lots of productivity, we're doing it in the desert regions of the ocean. If you don't like the outcome of ocean nourishment, of course, you can just turn off the tap. This is like irrigating the desert. If you um, irrigate the desert, the plants bloom, but if you turn off the water, they just die and go away. The same thing will happen in the ocean. When you turn off the food supply for the plankton, they'll just die and fall to the deep ocean. The benefit of urea as a successful fertilizer is evident on most agricultural land. It is rich in nitrogen, used by farmers to fertilize their crops. So Ian Jones has turned to an agricultural solution to produce his nitrogen in a form that can be added to the ocean, urea granules. He's met up with environmental scientist John Ridley at this fertilizer factory. Nitrogen is a very common element in the atmosphere. About 80% of the atmosphere is nitrogen and about 20% is oxygen. Uh, so nitrogen is read readily available. It's just not in the form that we can use for nourishing the oceans. The nitrogen fixed in urea granules should be easy to transfer and dissolve in seawater. Okay, what we're going to do here is just put some granular urea into just a pure glass of water. This will demonstrate the solubility of urea. This is similar to what will happen in an ocean nourishment plant because we'll convert granular urea into li a liquid form which can go through a marine pipeline and out into the marine environment to nourish the oceans. Gallons of urea in the ocean off Australia. Perhaps not every surfer's idea of fun, swimming in a component of urine. It's pretty strange that phytoplankton can prosper on this white granular material, isn't it? Mm, it is, yeah. But that's all they need to have a good life. So this is a pure form of urea. It has a slightly bitter taste, you know, but it doesn't taste like this. <laughs> so maybe putting urea in the ocean wouldn't be so bad after all. Ian Jones plans to run a pipe from a nitrogen factory and pump gallons of urea into the ocean, feeding the plankton which absorbs carbon dioxide, then sinks to the bottom of the sea, reducing global warming. But should we be meddling with an ecosystem that's taken millions of years to evolve? We've changed the planet, and once you start managing nature, you have to continue to manage nature. There's no use hoping that it will restore itself to a new equilibrium set up by humans. Nature will need to be managed forever now that we've changed it dramatically. If there's other ideas out there that actually can chew up some of these emissions that are being created, then I think that's fantastic. And it'd be, uh, it'd be good to see those, uh, those explored.